to come on video with me. <laughs> oh, there's Paulette, yay. If you don't want to come on video, that's fine too. <laughs> there's Craig. Mishon, you got the, the folks in the uh, virtual zoo ready? We're ready. I'm trying okay. to get my best, so. Yep, we're All right, ready. we're ready to. Nice looking crowd there. <clears throat> I'm about to. All right, folks, good morning. It is. 910 on November 10th of 2021 in the year of our Lord. Good morning. Welcome to the Center in North Texas. This is the first uh, big event uh, for this particular facility. I know they had some meetings with Global Entrepreneurship Week earlier this week, but this is probably the largest event so far in the short life of a, in the short birth of a long life of the Center of North Texas. So Welcome, and let's all give Darlise Adults a hand for putting this together. <laughs> There'll be other stuff going on today and, and, and for many years at this particular facility. However, this morning is uh, the Northeast Tarrant Communities One Million Cups meeting this morning. So we are in session. Thank you for joining us in person. I don't know the count, but I'm counting about 45 people in here. Uh, Michonne, how many are on virtually? Probably another 15, 20. We've got about a good dozen, if not more. Okay, great. Yeah. So I think this is probably close to a record. Who in here um, knows what One Million Cups is? Who doesn't know? Let me ask that. All right, well, cool. We will let you know what it is here. One Million Cups is a, a free network uh, organization geared towards entrepreneurs or what we call also wannapreneurs, people who are thinking about being an entrepreneur. It's a supportive network that meets weekly um, uh, where people can test ideas, tweak their business, validate, um, or connect them to other people as they're looking to either go into business or grow their business. And our goal with our Northeast Tarrant community, there's also one in Fort Worth, there's one in Irving, there's one in Plano. There are about 150 of these across the country where it's open to anybody. The only thing we ask of you is bring a smile, bring your, bring your person and uh, coffee. Uh, typically we have one to two presentations in a short hour window. And the key here is for those uh, entrepreneurs that are presenting, this isn't a sales pitch. You're not up here to, to say, uh, here, buy my product for $99.99, $99 fully guaranteed, call me at one, you know, one 817 uh, now uh, in the next 10 minutes or, or else. It's not a sales pitch, it's a presentation. It's opening up your heart, sharing what might be an obstacle about your business, uh, what you might need advice on, and typically, as an indirect uh, result, you might get business out of it. But the focus is learning for, about your business and learning from others about things that you could do to possibly grow or improve. Presentations, ironically, are really short. They're only about six minutes. Uh, it's really about what you do, how you're doing it, where you're doing it, and what your problems are. And then you open it up for about 20 minutes to facilitate questions. And sometimes somebody from outside who has no knowledge of that particular business or no knowledge of business whatsoever may have the best idea in the room. So the, the culture is very open, very organic, and nobody has uh, opinions. Rather, everybody's just sharing thoughts and absorbing them. We have sponsors each week. Uh, the coffee isn't free, but it's, it's free to people that show up, but somebody does pay for it. 
In this case, it's uh, Xenia Roastery, um, who is sponsoring One Million Cups uh, in, in the north center of North Texas here. Um, so if you ever decide to come in, there's coffee over here to, to enjoy. Uh, previously, we had the uh, One Million Cups Northeast community at the NRH Library. I would say for probably about six, six months or so, we met there. Today is the first day of One Million Cups Northeast at the center of North Texas. The goal, the goal is to probably have it here for probably another six months, six to nine months, or wherever we feel it might be good to transfer it to another location. The, the objective is to get to know Northeast Tarrant County, get to know what assets, uh, what features are out there for entrepreneurs and for the community to get to know other locations. We also have um, uh, culture consultants and the Inclusive Leadership Institute. Ms. Michonne Landry, uh, who is um, uh, with us today and, and is going to be uh, help trafficking the next segment of this presentation. Um, uh, she is sponsoring it and does a lot of the background work behind the scenes. We have a, a set of community organizers and many of us are here today. Um, you can see them on the screen. Uh, we do some stuff behind the scenes, a lot of planning. We uh, meet with presenters prior to today or prior to weekly meetings, just to make sure that they, they know what they're getting into and also to make sure that they know what they want to talk about. Um, but there is some stuff that goes on behind the scenes by the organizers. We love what we're doing. But if uh, you find yourself wanting to serve or be a part of something, we're open to more organizers. Now we're gonna put you guys on the spot. And we're going to pick on probably two people in the room, but we're also going to pick on some people virtually to introduce themselves, who they are, what they do, and uh, anything else they want to share with us that might be of interest. Mishan, I'll turn it over to you to pick on a couple people virtually. Great. So thank you for that. I'd love to have Jarrett and perhaps, let's see, is it Yamam? And forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Um, introduce themselves. Jared, are you on? Okay. Hi. Yes, you pronounced it correctly. Okay, uh, thank you, Yama. <laughs> Hi, my name is Yamam Sahib. Uh, I am a finance and management student at um, a place I consider my second home, Texas Wesley University. I have the privilege of coming today um, virtually because of my wonderful professor, Dr. Wright, who has extended this um, beyond the classroom and wanted us to see what business people are like. <laughs> um, and I'm just really grateful I get to learn from so many people in the field and, and people who um, experience different circumstances. And, and I hope to, to grow to be leaders like you guys. So thank you so much for giving me the time to introduce myself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, Jarrett's coming off. Okay, yeah, I'm, very I'm good. Sorry. I had technical difficulties. No worries. Um, I'm Jarrett. Uh, I go to Texas Wesleyan also. Um, I'm in Dr. Wright's class. Uh, I'm majoring in accounting, and I feel like this is a great opportunity to listen to other people who have been in a business setting and have information to share. And I look forward to it. Great. Thank you so much. All right, Craig, back to you. Thank, thank you, Michonne. <clears throat> Who do we want to pick on, Darlisa? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on two people that I've gotten to know really well, um, and uh, they're, they're getting more involved and they want to get more involved, and they are entrepreneurs, um, and, and, and their story is something that you guys are studying right now. So have to come up there, though. the first person I'm going to pick on is uh, David, if you don't mind coming up. And uh, yeah, 30 seconds, David. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is David Garner. I'm with Metrolite Solutions. What we do is we make a. Uh... Okay, this is uh... a. This is David. I'm with Metrolite Solutions. What we do is we make uh, people, uh, we make your company more noticeable uh, to keep your brand out there. 
on top of that through uh, promotional items, through uh, custom print, as well as customized apparel. Thank you very much, David, Gar David Garneau, Metrolite Solutions, your one-stop branding solution and your beacon to success. And uh, David's relatively new in his, in his business, about a year into it. He just got his website up and he's learning as he goes. And so he's become active. Another person is done a slight career change and uh, is more in the tech field from an entrepreneur standpoint. I'd like to ask Jason if you wouldn't mind coming up. Jason Madden with Mad Logic. Yep, so my name is Jason Madden. Uh, I've uh, been a developer for about 10 years and kind of wanted to do my own thing. So I started a company called Mad Logic. Uh, so I help businesses kind of with the back end data integration, data connection type stuff, uh, and just kind of implement it and help you get your kind of pain points dealt with, with uh, that sort of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that is all over the place, and I see opportunity to kind of help glue that. Uh, different products together. So that's kind of where I'm at. I've been at it for four or five years as a consultant, but now I'm starting to get more uh, developers to work with. So, uh, yep, thank you. Jack, do you have somebody you want to introduce? Yeah, we actually have a first time guest that I would like to introduce. He's the award-winning speaker at our Toastmasters group. Jen Smith, would you uh, introduce yourself to everybody? <laughs> Oh, nervous. My name is Jen Smith. I'm a massage therapist and owner of Sapphire Bodywork. I'm located inside of Old World Salon on 26. I just started that in May. I've been a massage therapist for a couple of years, but just decided to take the leap to do stuff on my own. So that's what I did. Thanks. Okay, we're going to do one more. And uh, don't worry, I'm not going to Shay, would you mind coming up? Shay Jackson, and introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shay Jackson. I am the CEO and founder of Dase Cyber Solutions. I help doctors prevent ransomware attacks. Thank you. So cool because um, <clears throat> the city of North Richland Hills, where you guys are sitting in, and I, I'm Craig Hulse. I work for the city of North Richland Hills, director of economic development. We welcome about 125 new businesses a year into our community. Unfortunately, we see about 100 close. <clears throat> it's a leak. I call it a leaking bathtub. What, and so what, what I see with One Million Cups, what I see with the Center NTX is the plug in that bathtub so that every year that 125 continues to build upon it rather than uh, seeing 100, or 100 businesses close. Just some fast facts regarding uh, entrepreneurship. <clears throat> Since the pandemic, roughly 111,000 new business applications have been filed um, which is three times the level pre-pandemic. And what does that mean? That means that the pandemic was a catalyst of change, both positive and negative. Um, negative in that people lost jobs or negative in that people uh, retired or found themselves forced to have a change, but also a positive in the sense that 111,000 new businesses have been filed, three times the typical level. And that means that, that people are, are going into entrepreneurship and they need that network, they need that culture of support to keep them going on. Um, <clears throat> uh, another interesting fact is roughly 20% of new businesses across the company, across the country, close in their first year of being open. There's two reasons. One, they don't either properly plan their business or two, they don't have the requisite support when they open. And so uh, for, for the students in the room, I know you guys are studying uh, new business, startup, entrepreneurialism. 
uh, about 80% of people in the country that have a job work for a small business. Uh, example, Bill Gates of Microsoft, he started his business in a garage in New Mexico. So as you study uh, entrepreneurialism, many of you will find yourselves going into business, whether you like it or not. You may work for a larger company. 10 years from now, you may decide to go into your own business. What you're learning now, sometimes you're going to learn, let's say, a, a typical subject. And you're wondering, how is this going to relate to dollar signs or how is this going to relate to you know, my future? What you're studying now is directly linked to what you might make or who you might be in, in, in the future. So you're not gonna learn a heck of a lot in this next half hour, but you're seeing, you just saw us, four people get up here who are in their infancy of their business and um, who need a network and support and who have, who have decided to participate. So I just wanna let you guys know, congratulations on pursuing your education, taking this class. And if you ever decide to go into business, remember this place because we're here for you. Um, and Darlisa is here for you uh, to point you in the right direction and give you that support. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Darlisa to introduce somebody special. So first of all, this room is way too quiet. We need some noise in this room. Are you guys excited Woo. to be here? <laughs> So from my understanding, we have a lot of students in the room, yes? Are you guys passionate about business? Yes? So if you're excited about business, I need you to make some noise. I need some hoop and hollering. I need something. I need something. Okay, so I would like to thank you guys, first and foremost, for coming today. We do have, as you can see, special guests in the room. Dr. Megan Wright, who is the assistant professor of management with Texas Wesleyan. And she thought of us and brought her students with us to be a part of the first woman who comes in this space. Can you turn that light on for me? The, um, so let's, the historical One Million Cups community, let's welcome Texas Wesleyan and their students this morning. And I want to bring, I'm going to bring Dr. Wright up in just a little bit and she's going to you know share some information and she's going to introduce some of her students and we're going to have some love in the room so i am very grateful uh, one more favor from somebody back there can you take it off of here i'm going to stop sharing hold on does that open us up yeah well nobody has their camera on but it's okay. So, yeah, this is good. This is good. So, my name is Darlisa Deltz. I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, um, in a community that um, underserved, but we were a homegrown community, and we didn't see entrepreneurship, right? We saw church. We saw family. We saw the hustle. We saw the grind. Um, I've been in Texas five years now, five year, July, May, five years. And um, I'm a very blessed individual, okay? Um, sorry. Um, um, I'm going to spend a little time talking about where you are today, um, how we got here, um, and then just kind of how One Million Cups kind of plays into this whole facet. Of course, someone would call me um, during that time. So... Um, I worked in corporate America 11 years. I realized that corporate America was a step stool for me. It was not a ladder. And um, I'm one of those people I enjoy learning. I learn for fun. So I have multiple degrees. I have multiple certifications. And really, none of that matters because it's really just all for me because I like to be able to speak professionally to people and help them in any realm, okay? Okay. So in my mind, it's like, oh, get a degree in it. That'll help you. Oh, get a degree in it. That'll help you. So that's just kind of what I do. So um, graduated number seven in my class in high school. Um, my mom, she was a teen mom. My sister was a teen mom. And I was supposed to follow in that path. So first time college student 
in my house. Um, I'm sorry. Um, first time entrepreneur, right? So this is it. Moved to Texas. Well, no, I got my start in um, entrepreneurship because I learned about being an entrepreneur because someone paid me to do a job for them. Thank you, ma'am. Someone paid me to do a job for them, okay? And it was fun for me. Strategic planning, that's my thing. So they asked me to do strategic planning and I did it. So they asked me, how could they pay me for what I had helped them with? And I'm like, you don't have to pay me. It's okay. You know, I had a good job. I was okay. So they started paying me. Then they sent people to pay me. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Right? So, and then my husband, you know, I'm starting to get all this money. So he's thinking I'm like turning tricks for people, you know, and I'm like, no, no, no. So I had to figure out how to legitimize the in month, the money that I was getting. So I studied entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, I'm about 20 some uh, years old at the time. And again, I didn't see entrepreneurship at the time where I lived. It was $25 to get an LLC. I'm like, what, are, what have I been missing? So I started doing all these classes, YMCA, library, and opened it up to anyone who would come and who wanted to listen. Like, hey, did you know you can have your own business and it only costs $25? Let me tell you how. So the classes would just fill up, okay? So the Small Business Development Center at that time in Missouri, they were coming to these classes. I didn't know who that was, you know, I'm just like, I learned something, let me tell people about it. So they were coming to these meetings and after a short stint of me doing these across St. Louis, one of them approached me and says, we'd like to offer you a contract opportunity. Can we talk? And I'm like, no, um, I have a job, I'm good. I don't know what contract opportunity means, but, it didn't say insurance. It didn't say taking care of my family. So no, I'm good. They were like, but you're teaching entrepreneurship. Aren't you an entrepreneur? No, not at all. I just learned about it. So I want to teach other people about it, right? They were like, no, we think you have something. We'd like to talk to you about it. So I went to University of Missouri, Columbia, which is where the... Um, campus was housing it. So they were offering me opportunity to oversee a contract for an entire county. Again, I'm in my 20s. I'm like, you got the wrong person. Like, I'm really good. I'll teach some classes for you. I'll definitely get up. I'll do some presentations for you. But no, no, I can't oversee a contract. And they were like, but you can. So prayed about it, thought about it, stopped thinking about it, came back around, and um, I said, yes. So I was going through some things in the corporate spec anyway. And it was just now I realized it was God kind of pushing me out into what he was calling me to do. So it's kind of like a bird. He's like plucking up the thorn so he can get you out. And so I took it. And I remember, so it was a hustle and grind. I had small kids at the time. And it was go to work in the morning at five o'clock get off in time so I could have meetings with people just to get home and do homework and get ready and do it all over again to saying yes to this contract on a Friday I closed out did the party celebration on the corporate side and I wake up Monday morning like I'm tripping <laughs> like what am I supposed to do like I messed up nobody's calling me I don't have anything to do like I can sleep in <laughs> This is a problem. So I immediately went into regret. Probably about an hour later, my phone rang and told me my flight was, I'll be on the plane, yada, yada, go up to University of Missouri, Columbia. I meet with the provost. I meet with, you know, all these fancy big time people. And again, I'm in my 20s, early 20s. And they had welcome signs and they had fancy lunches. And it was like, I was the main attraction. So I was like, no, I think you got the wrong person. Seriously. Long story short, I took the position or I took the contract with the Small Business Development Center. I traveled, I spoke, 
I lobbied, I met so many amazing people. I helped get so many different organizations started. Women's Business Centers of Missouri, there's a Cortex Innovation District. The very first um, accelerator in St. Louis, Missouri, I was a part of the committee to get that up and going. The difference between St. Louis and Texas is that the resources there were non-existent. So we had to train our entrepreneurs. We had to help them get funded. We had to literally hold their hand to get them to a place where they wanted to be, which was entrepreneurship, right? So I loved it. So um, St. Louis, though, is not the best place to, in my opinion, um, at that time, to raise a family. Lots of crime. Our family was there, but I wanted something different for my children. So me and my husband and I, we decided to move to Texas. Why Texas? I don't know. I came here a couple times and the air was just different. It was a lot bigger. You know, I just kind of smelled opportunity and somebody said it was the land of milk and honey. So I'm like, baby, pour my cereal because I am on <laughs> the way, okay? So um, we came and I had worked with a lot of the Texas SBDC Small Business Development Center organizations through my work in Missouri. Um, I became real fond, uh, or the ASBDC, which is the national guy uh, or organization, became real fond of me. So I literally traveled, did work in Kansas City, um, Louisiana, of course, St. Louis, Columbia, all over, okay? So I took a position here, they had one open and I worked in Collin County. I lived in Hazlitt, which was an hour 30 minutes one way without traffic. If you added traffic, I'm a good two and a half hours one way. But for me, that was okay because it gave me the opportunity one, to learn the Texas landscape. I still, you know, made a little change. I'm not gonna say I made a lot of money, but in essence, it was culture shock, okay? Um, I went from being an entrepreneur making decent money to coming to Texas and I took a position, which was in essence a desk job, okay? So again, I'm used to being in the community. I'm used to being out there, but I absolutely loved it because the people were great. So um, the people were great. The commute was terrible and I needed something different. So I prayed and I'm like, God, I need to get on the Tarrant County side because this is tough, you know? I still had children. I'm that PTA, PTO, booster club, um, after school activity, all that kind of mom. And so when I came to Texas, it cut because my day was six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening, but it wasn't my own thing anymore. I was working for someone. So I did that for two years. And I went my first six months in the Collin County SBDC, I secured $7.2 million in capital for businesses in the Collin County area. Look it up, it's on Dallas Business Journal. And they were like, who is this chick? Where does she come from? Like, where they do that at? But that is what I was taught to do, help people get to where they wanted to be. So of course, um, I kind of outgrew that position, but I had an awesome director and I asked her, could I make this more of a community thing versus a desk job? Because I can't do desk job. So she's like, okay, sure. We just got to make sure you're working and you know that kind of thing. So it was new uncharted territory for them. So she said, okay, so I'm out. I'm having a good time. I'm meeting people. So then all these people start coming through the pipeline and they're like, we want to meet with Darlisa. We want to meet with Darlisa. And that's just not how it worked. We had six, five advisors and, you know, we had to get them as they came through the pipeline. And they were like, well, you can't meet with Darlisa, but we have, they were like, I don't want to meet with them. I want to meet her. Um, and so long story short, um, right as the government was getting ready to shut down, I got offered a position in the financial world, okay? 7A position, you know, hey, we're here. We see that you're, you know, cranking out loans for people or helping people get loans. So we have an opportunity. It was a potential six-figure opportunity, new lending company coming to the uh, Metroplex. And I was like, yes, it was remote. I'm like, finally. So I say yes to the position. Really didn't want to do the financial world because that's very cutthroat. 
but it was a good opportunity for me and my family at that time. So I thought, so I said yes to the position, put in my notice about a month and a half with the SBDC so I can close out with my clients, end on a very good note, took the position. Four days into starting my position, the government shuts down. So when the government shuts down, so did that position. And for the first time in my life, I was without a job. I started working at 14 years old, by the way. So I was without a job. And I'm like, what? How does this happen? So there is where the North Texas Entrepreneur Education and Training Center was birthed, okay? Um, I was kind of angry at God at the time because I thought I was doing the right thing, but it closed out. But it made me realize he had to shut all of that down to get me to a place where he could deal directly with me the way I needed to be dealt with. So in my study, in my time at the SBDC, even though Texas was the land of milk and honey, it's not just free flowing, right? You got to go through some hills, valleys, probably the, what's the barbed wire fences, then you got to fight the people in line and all that. So there is a land of milk and honey, but it's not readily accessible like people make it seem. So I realized that there was still disparities in the learning curve for people of the underserved, underserviced and minority communities getting access to business resources. And for me, it all starts here, right? It's a mind thing. It's a mindset like where you are physically is important, but mentally is a thing. And I understand that because I came from a world where there was mental lack, okay? So started the North Texas Entrepreneur Training Center to be a resource for that community, helping them to get access to services at a low cost, no cost, but just being a connector of all worlds. Did that, we started over in Hearst. In Hearst, had this beautiful office. It was about a thousand square feet or so. And I thought I was like, had a ride. I'm like, oh, this is great. And I could be an asset to the SBDC because they have a pipeline that they have to fill and they have check boxes. So if we get them early and we help them and we groom them, then we can get them to them so they can fill their check boxes. The SBDC was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Why would we partner with you? Like, we do that. We help small businesses. And it's like, but really you don't? Like, because you do, but they have to be at a certain point. So I'm just trying to help these people. I want to get you these people, but let us help you, you know? So anyway, 2019, worst year of my life. I made no money, right? I started my business 2018 and I'm like, yes, woohoo. 2019, dry. But guess what I did? I volunteered, I served, I engaged, I painted the landscape, yada, yada, yada. So I made a footprint and I'm like, this is exhausting. And I remember praying December 31st, 1159. God, if you let me live to see 2020, I know you have something better for me, right? 2020 comes, I get a call, I'm asked to go speak in San Antonio in March, got some classes, they're starting to fill up, things are going good. So I'm like, yes, he heard my prayer, so I know things are going to be okay. Let's do this. I go speak, I come back. The next day, the world shuts down. (laughs) Really, God? (laughs) Like this? This is how we doing it? Um, But because of the groundwork that I laid in 2019, 2020 ended up being my best year. Um, A lot of the organizations that I reached out to for help, for partnership, for connectivity, didn't want to see my face, didn't want to read my emails, and I did read receipt, okay, just saying, they would read them, (laughs) right, nothing, 2020 comes, and all of these entrepreneurs, these side hustlers, these individuals that, you know, get by on just making it, they're stuck, they have no clue what to do, projection, what, what does that mean, So guess what? My phone, my email starts blowing up because all of a sudden they realize, okay, so this is what you do. Ah, I get it. Okay, we have an opportunity for you. Would you like to work with us? Would you like to partner? So in 2020, I hired my first contract employee, right? So I go from 
nothing to contract employees, four contracts in a year, everything is going, right? Excellent. Um, through the progression, um, I have so many people to thank. First of all, Craig Hulse, City of North Richland Hills, Marco Johnson, Spark Yard and UNT Health Science Center, Tracy Irby, Texas Women's University, my ride or die, Deidre Kendrick, like without, and of course my family, like I'll be remiss if I don't say my family, but without them, I don't know where I would be, right? I don't know where I would be because they are the ones who put my name in the atmosphere. They are the ones who said, let's do it. I met Megan through Global Entrepreneurship, aha, Startup Weekend. And Megan probably didn't know at that time. <laughs> I would come to those meetings sometimes just for the lunch, okay? Because I wasn't making any money, right? So long story short, for me, it became about ecosystem building, right? Realizing we live in ecosystems, whether we think we do or we don't. And so my purpose became, how do I begin to build these ecosystems where one, I'm not the only person that looks like me, that has that story, that has experienced that same thing, that's sitting in a room, right? Because if we are entrepreneurs, if we're entrepreneurial, we should be able to express that, right? And it doesn't matter the amount of money you have. It doesn't matter, you know, if your family's done it, if you have passion, if you have drive and you're willing to put it to work, well, somebody needs to get behind that. And what about the people who don't have a network, right? Well, they need a network because entrepreneurship is lonely, right? Very lonely. It's very hard. So what we, me, my focus became, let's create an environment where people can come that can feel safe they can cry, they can laugh, they can tell some jokes to make other people laugh. If they don't have food to eat, we got some snacks. I can't say that I provide like a lot of food, but it's a place where people can come. You can have no money, you can have a lot of money, but you need to be in a place where you can grow and develop what it is that you aspire to do. There in lies the center, North Texas. So yes, I have the North Texas Entrepreneur in Training, but that's more so for education. We do a lot of programs, classes, sessions, and I'm very grateful, Ms. Janae Beer, she is my program director, hired her this year to be on staff with us. Um, we get here and it's like, well, why would you do that during the pandemic? Why would you do that? Why not? right? People still need a place to go. And it's not just for entrepreneurs, right? I hate working from home, first of all. So I need a place to go. I am a coffee shop connoisseur. So let's create a place where people can go. They can separate themselves. They can have a change of scenery. They can be productive. So the Center North Texas, we offer that. It's a coffee shop feel with business service amenities. You can come here. You can work. You can connect to our secure Wi-Fi unlike a coffee shop. You have access to printing, copying, scanning. If you need to have a small meeting, we have a conference room. It has a full wall of chalkboard. So if you just want to doodle a little bit, we have a chalkboard wall. We have a section up here just for lounging. Yeah, you can work there, but the TV has Netflix, Hulu, um, Prime, whatever you call it, because you know what? Maybe you have children. Maybe you have dogs like me and they're just on your nerves and you just need time away. We are membership based. Uh, we are the first uh, flexible workspace offering in the North Richland Hills community. So we are not co-working, but we are community working. So if you come into this space, you can be a entrepreneur, right? My hope is that Mr. Jack Bradshaw, which is the president of the Northeast Terran Chamber, will be in the space. And guess what? Now you can rub elbows with the president of the chamber, the economic development department manager, Craig Hulse, very cool guy. But you wouldn't know that, right? If you didn't know that, Elizabeth, which is his right and left hand, he just doesn't say it. Maybe, you know, she's in here and she can get you mapped out to anything that you need. Shay, she does all kinds of things. Cybersecurity, she's the STEM, or better yet, <clears throat> Dr. Megan Wright, right? So this is the place that 
Darlisa has created, but it hasn't been all Darlisa. It's by the help and the good grace of the good Lord, because without him and my faith, we wouldn't be here today. Um, so I have everything to credit for that. So I don't do long presentations because those get boring, but I do like to share, right? So I encourage all of you guys, if you're in this area, come on by, swing by. I do have information about our memberships. If you're interested in becoming a member, that's very low cost. Or like I said, if you're in the neighborhood, swing by. We may have some good Christian music on. Um, depending on the day, we may have Torrin Wells, we may have Marvin Sapp, we may have William Murphy, we may have, it doesn't matter, right? Come in, visit with us. That's the center of North Texas, guys. And thank you for listening to my story. So, now that I have talked to you guys, I would like to introduce Miss Megan Wright, who will allow some of her students to share their story. Miss Megan, the floor is yours. Darlisa wanted to make noise, so um, I love Darlisa's story. I met Darlisa because Darlisa and I just show up, and we show up everywhere, and we just keep showing up, and we meet people. So uh, I don't know what are your what's your takeaway from Darlisa's story? That's what I would ask. We're studying entrepreneurship, and uh, I think it's so important to not look at a textbook to understand it. You can't take a class and understand the ups and downs, highs and lows, barbed wire fences and valleys and peaks until you walked this walked it. So. Um, I was an entrepreneur back in the day before I arrived in Texas from Illinois. Um, yeah, we're Midwesterners coming this way and there's a lot more of them coming behind us. Um, so anyway, what's your takeaway? What'd you hear from Darlisa? What's it take? Yeah. What's that? Dedication. Yeah, dedication. A lot of hope. I don't drink either, so some days I wish I could. <laughs> Darlisa is plugging in, and like Craig said, she's plugging holes in the leaking bathtub. Darlisa didn't mention it, but Darlisa was on WFAA yesterday, so I don't know if you saw or if you watched the news, Channel 8. So um, out there spreading the word. But Darlisa built a network and that is huge. And Darlisa just kept getting up and getting up and getting up and going back for it. So hats off to Darlisa. This is a wonderful space, very much needed, as I understand, in the city of North Richland Hills and just this area. And so I commend you, Darlisa, for taking a leap, maybe so to speak, and, and being here. So Craig, oh, not Craig, I'm sorry, Jack. It's funny too, because we met Darlisa really through the Ludwig Cup, right? And as we got to know her, we just realized how many people she knew and how connected. Like, you're connected to that, and you're connected to that, you're connected to that. It was really amazing. And we like to think of ourselves as pretty connected, but Darlisa is like uber connected. <laughs> <laughs> but as you, you, know, you guys are studying entrepreneurship, we talk about the struggle, you know, how you have to really embrace the struggle. It's kind of a one to two year struggle as you're building your business. You, you know, today's you know, real connected society, you're building a reputation at the same time. All of those things are very interconnected and you just you know not always ready for the struggle when you're going out there and starting I mean there's a number of entrepreneurs here who are nodding their heads going yeah there's a there's a struggle that's real out there that's part of it. and it's you know 10 I, 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 I joke about how you know they'll look at somebody successful as an entrepreneur and just say oh man they're a 10 year overnight success right because they put in that much time and effort <laughs> yeah being successful and that's part of it but it's very satisfying and you know, later on, when you when you have built that success, you'll look back at that struggle, and that'll really be the most memorable time that you had. And that's the stories that you're gonna you're gonna tell people. So we just talk about embracing the struggle as an entrepreneur, and so just by meeting some of these people, you realize that that is that is part of it, and it's good that you're mentally kind of ready that you know that's gonna come. So so Darlisa's had some of the some of the embracing the struggle, right, Darlisa? <laughs> Darlisa is very well, very well connected, and, and she does everything she can to feed more connections. She has won awards um, in Dallas. She was awarded just recently um, through at the Dallas um, Startup Evangelist. Startup Evangelist. Um, so she's 
she's a leader, she's a feeder, and she's an instigator. And those are the three categories that um, most startups talk about, but she does all of that. So congrats, Lisa, or Darlisa, and um, you hear me all the time. So I have nothing else to say. <laughs> But this was a great event and One Million Cups is here among many other resources. Just go find the resources. We are plentiful in resources in North Texas, North Richland Hills, Tarrant County, and the larger Metroplex area. Tell us about Global Entrepreneurship. Global Entrepreneurship Week it started in 2018 as a six week, hey, let's get this back, it's missing. And we launched it with 17 events and had a handful of people show up and it was a great event. So the next year we got a little bit more organized and started planning ahead. And so we have scaled Global Entrepreneurship Week in Fort Worth that started in 2018. We've scaled it in four years to the largest event in the country. Second year in a row that we are the largest event and we are largest by city. We are largest by state because Texas is the biggest state and has the most events. And we're largest by community partners. We engage the most community partners and Darlis is an example of that partner. And um, we are struggling to raise money, but it's entrepreneurship and I, it's hard to get money moving. So that's our biggest struggle right now, but we have 135 events this week and uh, we're seeing a lot of virtual attendance going on and we're getting strategic as an organizing team of all volunteers. There's 12 of us that do this, it takes 12 months out of the year. Um, a lot of hours, a lot of hours to get it done, but we're, we're getting it done and we're starting to build a lot of momentum. And it's a way for us to celebrate entrepreneurs create situations like this where we rub elbows with Jack, who's chamber president in the economic development. And that's what it takes is the collision, the opportunities for ideas and resources and all of that to just collide, I would say. And so I see Global Entrepreneurship Week as a catalyst for continued movement in North Texas, um, especially the Metroplex. So we're very proud. One cups. And One Million Cups um, started out of the Kauffman Foundation in uh, Kansas City, and um, Craig said it's over 100, I think it's 163 today is the number of chapters. It's the eighth birthday of Fort Worth chapter, and then we have a new one here, so yeah. So find a one million cups near you. It's always available. The goal is that we would have a million cups of coffee shared while we talked about entrepreneurship and try to help more entrepreneurs get started. So it's a great opportunity. Craig, I'm done. I'll turn it back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wright. Um, that pretty much wraps up today. Uh, just a reminder that um, at one o'clock today, there's an actual ribbon cutting uh, to uh, memorialize the opening of this facility. It comes, comes with a big pair of scissors and a ribbon, and that's what happens when you open up a business and all that fun stuff. But um, welcome back. Uh, next Wednesday, any Wednesday you want, nine o'clock, coffee here. Um, I think uh, your instructor said that you might get extra credit if you show up. <laughs> so, I'll bring it up to um, see if anyone wants to say anything. Or... Yeah, Does anyone have anything they want to say? Anybody, uh, me, Sean, I'm going to put you on the spot. Does anybody have anything to say or, or comment before we close out today? You know what, Craig, um, while you all were talking, I put in the link to the um, the North Texas, the Center North Texas grand opening um, for the Saturday. I also put out the Global Entrepreneurship Week link to as well. And then I also put out the link for speaking and presenting at One Million Cups. So um, I did put those out there. Awesome. Well, I know we're, we're short on time today. But uh, again, uh, we will be meeting here, same bat time, same bat channel, Wednesday at 9 a.m. here at Center North Texas for One Million Cups next week. Thank you. And thank you guys all for coming. And thank you for our One Million Cups community for joining us. And yeah, Shay, you have a question? Right, quick. Before you leave, Michelle asked me to take a Okay. So we're going to, uh, so um, you guys on Virtual World are off the hook. But we're going to take a picture of, of everyone in the room. And um, again, thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll sign off. Have a great day.